Hi everybody, welcome to our um, Circle of Om, Qigong and Tai Chi uh, class for today and we are, doing, um, we are doing a few exercises today in regards to increasing our immunity system. A uh, quick brief about Qigong and Tai Chi, these are two modalities that have come from China, they go all the way back to 5000 years. Um, how it started, you may also even Google, have a look, but apart from that, let's start with the class today. We start with an opening sequence, whenever we start with a class, we come into that beautiful uh, penguin stance, I call it, some people call it the V, Tara and I, we do call it penguin, so two fingers apart between the heels, come up straight, bring your palms, turn them upwards, the thumb and the index finger touching your thighs on the side. You roll on the thumbs. Left hand down, right hand on top, thumbs together. With the left fist, gong. Bring it to your heart. Bring it down towards your lower dantian. Very nice. Now uh, let's start with a bit of uh, warm up session. So. Warm up, uh, a simple stretching that we can do. Let's start with the, from the top to the bottom. How about sure. that? Sure. Yeah, sounds yes. good. Okay, fair enough. So let's start with a bit of a neck now. Just listen to one shoulder, and then the next. Just getting some fluidity and flexibility in every joint in our body today. It's quite important that we do these stretches on a daily basis also. It promotes health and promotes flexibility in the joints and overall health in the body. Now bring down your head down. Feel that stretch in your neck. Bring your head back. Feel that stretch maybe in your throat. Come back forward again. Bring your hand and try to pull a little bit down your head, a little bit lower. Release, bring your head up. Pull it back, all the way back. Feel that in your throat, try to close your mouth. Come back forward. Roll all the way forward and then roll towards the left or the right and then turn towards the other side. In the meantime here, observe your shoulders. Do not pick your shoulders when you're listening to one side or to the next. Pull those shoulders down. And one more time on each side. Very slowly here, if you have any injuries or anything in your neck or feel bad pain, stop. Do not continue with the exercise. Come back to the other side. One last time to the other. And roll forward first, come back and release. Nice. With here, uh, it's a turtle move, we call it the turtle head. So bring in, yes, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit funny, I know. Turtle uh, scoops the ice cream. Turtle scoops the ice cream. Okay, nice. that's new. Okay, cool. Now I know something new. Tuck in the chin, scoop the ice cream with the mouth, go forward and bring it in. Do it again. Scoop forward. One last time. What's the opposite, Tara? Hmm? What's the opposite called? No, we're doing the opposite, right? Is it like pushing forward with that teaspoon or spoon and bringing in the olive? One last time here. If you want to eat olives with ice cream, I guess so. <laughs> okay, roll your shoulders very slowly. Remember that all these exercises that, I'm, that we are showing you is only suggestive as we are not there. However, if you do feel any bad pain at any point in, during these exercises, please stop and go and consult uh, your physician or your healthcare. Uh, about the exercise and how it affected you and try to find um, any uh, alternatives how to do it. Now bring in the opposite direction a couple of times here. Do this very slowly to warm up your shoulder blades and your shoulders and then release and just simple. 
Roll your hands very slowly here. Feel those little, little, try to do a full rotation here as much as you can. You might hear a bit of clicks and cracks. Nice, and then do the opposite direction. Very slowly, try to fully open that shoulder as much as you can. Believe it or not, over the years I've had many injuries in my shoulders and I've tried to overcome them through slow exercise. Now reverse the other hand. One time. Try to open that shoulder. Usually my left shoulder does a few more extra cracks here than the right. And then reverse. Try to open that shoulder. There it is. That my little crack. Again, do to the maximum that you can. Nice. Loosen up the shoulders. Now, pick those shoulders up and release them. Pick them up, release. Pick, release. Now go a little bit faster. Pumping. Keep your palms down. Just to get that nice warmth up. In your shoulders. Why are you laughing again? Yeah. Oh, you said keep your pants down. No, keep pumping. It's very different. <laughs> release. Simple, bring in your shoulders in, pull them. You can stay here as long as you like and then bring that elbow up and pull. When you're pulling in that elbow, your hand is into the middle. We're not going to go left and right today. I'm just going to keep it into the simple posture. Now in this one, sometimes what will happen that your head will and your shoulder will push you down. Try to pull it up. Open that chest as much as you can. Release. Bring in the other hand in. Pull it in. Now usually some people when they pull it in, they don't bring that neck out. Bring that neck out. Feel that pull from the inside shoulder. Gently bring that same hand and pull it in. Pull that elbow in again. That hand is nicely released here. Pick that head out of that turtle shell. Keep it open. Keep that shoulder open. You got another comment again, Tara? Seems to be a turtle thing. <laughs> yes. I've, I mean, keep on telling Tara. By the way, I'm John. John and Tara, Tara and John. Next, uh, bring your elbows to your waist and Pull the elbows forward. Feel this in your socket of your shoulders again. And no turtle skins here. Now. Pull it back. This is your superhero move. Yes, I call this the superhero move. Haven't you seen superheroes standing like this? Of course, with the fists here. Yeah. We're doing kind of same. Pull it back. One more time. Pull the elbows, push the elbows forward. back. Nice, release. Now a little bit with the wrists. What is this move that you like it? The diving swallow. Okay, the diving swallow. So it's very simple. It's with the wrist. You pull your fingers in and you push it out and open. Pull it. Push. It's like swimming. But it's a diving swallow of times here. Open. Feel that in your wrists, in your hands, in your forearms. You can even do it wider when you are going. This is a wider way how to do it. You can do the simple form or the wide. Just stretching and warming up the whole entire body. One more time here. Nice. Bring the hands down. A little bit to the left and the right. We'll come back to the wrists at the end again. A little bit left and right. Again, be careful here with your lower back. Sometimes what happens, we um, rely onto the lower back and compensate through these moves. Try to engage your core here. Nice, just a few times. 
come back to your neutral bring one foot forward one foot back a little bit forward and back it's like rocking forward and back now with tai chi and qigong which are very close to each other very interrelated to each other all movements comes from the hip so it's important for us to get this hip nice and warmed up also remember that in all the moves in tai chi and qigong we do not hyperextend limbs or hold the breath everything needs to be small, smooth and soft next a little bit of wiggling the hips here big circles pick any direction you want not necessarily direction i'm doing and also Sometimes I forget which direction I started, so remember that. Now, just wiggle the hips here. Just going forward and back with the hips, trying to release those tension. You'll feel that in your lower back attached to your hip. A little bit of relief there. Now remember that direction, now do the opposite, big circles. What again, Tara? something to say oh i forgot which way i was going <laughs> now wiggle the hips just the hips it's an internal work this one we're going to do one move here it's about relieving uh lower back and stretching the whole spine in a minute now it's very simple it's imagine your tailbone here which is right onto the hips, what we're going to do is tuck that hip forward and imagine that tailbone now push it down. While pushing it down, your crown of your head and your chin goes in and the crown goes up. It's like opening everything. You should feel this in your middle back and upper back and lower back. Release one more time. Tuck that pelvis forward, push the tailbone down, tuck that chin in, pull the crown of your head up. Release one more time. Push forward and down, pull inwards and up. Release. Nice. Next one, I like to stay away from Tara because I might hit her sometimes. It's simple. Going back and rotating like and looking behind you as far as you can. Remember when we were kids, when we were children, we used to do this all the time. Try to slap your sides with your hands. Looking all the way back. Now be careful, don't get dizzy here. Bring your arms high and tap your shoulders here. Just a couple of times, warming up all your fascia, all your muscles here, all the way to your shoulders. Nice. Slowly come back down. Next is a little bit work with the hips and the balance. So, bring in that one leg and rotate on one leg. Now, of course, if you can't keep your balance here, put your hand on a wall. Open that hip as wide as you can. Or hold a chair. Or a table. Whatever suits you. Or even better, leave the hands and try to balance. And then, do the opposite. Nicely warm up hips is the best thing. And then, bring in the knee up. Now, point with the toes. Flex and open the toes. Point. Flex. Point. Legs always open the toes. Now extend the leg. Pull it in. Use the muscles here. Extend and flex all the muscles. Pull it in. Extend. Pull it in. Release. Now sometimes you'll hear, hear a bit of clicks here. It's okay. It's uh, What happens is that your abductors slide off your sit bone or your pelvis here. Try to balance yourself. Slow it down. Open as much as you can. And then, reverse. See, I'm trying to focus by keeping my eyesight on one steady point so I wouldn't lose my balance. And it's not looking at the camera. Ooh, I lost my balance. Always prepare your exit. Be 
careful. The aim is not to injure yourself there. Come back to neutral. Point the toes. Flex and open the toes. Point. Flex. Point. Flex. Extend and pull in all the muscles. Bring it in. Extend. Bring it in. Extend. Bring it in. Release. A little bit to relieve the hip, just a little bit of pumping onto the sides. You'll feel how warmed up your hips are. You'll feel all the muscles and all the joints being engaged here. Nice. Come back to neutral a little bit, in and out with the knees. And then maybe going into a circle. Be careful here if you have major knee injury or minor, sometimes it becomes a major one. Be very gentle with your knees. And always, always do not do 100%. Maybe 80, maybe 70, that's enough. The aim of it is to keep us moving and to keep that lubrication in the joints up there. Nice. A little bit here of a pulse. Bring one foot forward, one foot back. Just a little bit of pulse. Or if you can, maybe go a little bit deeper. And then switch the feet. Beautiful. This time a little bit of squats here. Bring the feet either together or even to the sides. Let's start first together. Go all the way down, do it to your maximum. If you can't come all the way down, I'll do the adjusted version. Tara's gonna go all the way down. I'm gonna go just a little bit down here and up. This, this, this could be my maximum. You can put your hands out if you feel out of balance. Oh yes, you can always come here and then up, come down. And you'll hear cracks. Up. And then maybe turn a little bit your feet wide and if you can come down keep your back straight sometimes what will happen we will tend to go for try to open come back up maybe you can go wider go down touch the floor come up one last time touch the floor come up nice a little bit with the feet find out that you're Breath work might increase here. And then the other side, engage the hip with it while turning these circles. And then change the foot. And then reverse direction. Great. Um, some of these, uh, the following exercises, um, are part of the long life uh, sequences that we are going to be doing. We're going to be doing some point breathing and point massages uh, for our meridians and acupressure points. So the first one is the famous acupressure point, which is the large intestine number four, which is between the thumb and the index finger, right in between there. This is quite uh, famous for, for headaches, right? Yeah. However, to relieve headaches. To relieve headaches. However, this point is also quite famous for uh, increasing your immune system. So we just go into a clockwise direction circles here, right in between, and we just massage that point. We do it around 30 to 50 times. We're not going to do 50 times today. We'll do like 20 times mm -hmm. today. And then switch your hands. Again, clockwise direction. If you want to see which clockwise direction it is, when you look at it, it should be in a clockwise direction. Just a few circles. And you press on to two points, forward and back. Nice. The next one is called the San Jiao. One of the, it's a San Jiao sh channel. So it's uh, basically two fingers off your wrist and between the two bones there's a little bit of a hollow spot there and that spot we're going to massage it clockwise direction so two fingers 
and then there's a line. You put your hand between the two bones and the muscles, you'll find a small hole. Massage that direction if you want to see. There it is. It's right here. Oh, yeah, it could be yeah. sensitive. See? Just a few times here. It's great. You will feel it. It's quite sensitive as Tara said. Mm. And then switch the hands. Again, two fingers onto the wrist. Draw the line, which is here. There it is. Find a little hollow spot that will directly attract your thumb into it and you'll feel. And one side would feel more sore than the other one. More tender. More tender. The next one is a, one of the stomach channels, which is also quite famous about increasing um, your immune system. And that's stomach 35 or 36. Now imagine your kneecap, put your fingers underneath your the the kneecap, three fingers down, draw a line towards the side. Now in the side, there's the, your muscle and your, and your bones there. And in between, you will find a little hollow spot between the muscles and the tendons there, underneath. Mm -hmm. And you, it might be a bit tender and then go th 30 to 50 times in a clockwise direction. This is also one of the main meridians that promotes health and increases immune system. And then switch to the other leg again. Three fingers, draw a line towards the side going outwards. Find a little hollow spot. Funny thing with acupressure and, and meridians, all the little, little hollow spots within our body is where we can get access to the meridians. It's like doing acupuncture without the needles at the moment. Just go in a clockwise direction. Knee massage. Nice. <laughs> the next one is uh, point massage the next one is point tapping so what we'll do is a hollow fist and we'll start with all the points again and we just bang onto that point and what you will see is that your hand start getting a little bit red and that's how your blood is circulating a little bit more into that area opening that channel flushing it hmm. Around 30 to 50 times again. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, please don't hurt your hand and break it. Just be gentle with it. But at the same time, a little bit of force into it is also good. Now switch the hands. Find that point again. A large intestine point. With a hollow fist. Nice. We did the Sanjiao point. Again, remember where that point is. Two fingers from your wrists and then bring the outer sections and just tap at those points. Around 50 times again, 30 to 50 times. We're not going to do 50 times today, but maybe close to 30. Mm. It might be a bit tender here, so please be gentle again with your hands and arms. Nice. Next, last but not least, create a little bit of a suction cup here with your hands on both the legs, those parts of the stomach 35 that we did. Just a bit of a tap here. Awakening up and opening those channels. move we're going to be doing uh, from the Shiba Shetai Chi series it's called floating silk hands in order to come to this uh, pose the first thing we need to get is our feet work if our footwork is correct so we go into a 90 degrees angle you draw a line onto the where your toes are bring that foot foot a foot and a half your toes are on one line, your feet are parallel. And then bring your weight onto your balls of your feet. 
your heels are empty, it's like bouncing there, but the heels are touching the floor. Okay? Your balls of your feet in traditional Chinese medicine, it's your kidney one point. And then bring the knees together and knees apart and then tuck the pelvis forward. You should be feeling that coiling sensation into your feet. As if roots, it's coming out of your feet and attaching yourself to, to the ground. Release the muscles in your pelvis. Your back is straight, your belly is nice and soft. Bring your hands up. And then just look at the exercise first. Floating silk hands. And I'll explain to you how to do this. First, always observe the exercises. And Tara will continue doing it while I'm explaining it to you. What's happening here is that one palm is up and the other palm is down. The palm that is up, facing up, is the one that floats back. You bring in, close the arm, you don't lift that elbow up or down, then you turn forward, you push forward and you switch. You breathe in, then you turn back. And you breathe out while pushing forward and switching. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Remember at the beginning of the class I said, all your movements in Tai Chi and Qigong comes from the hip. The hip drives the movement. So when we're turning back, it's the hips that are moving. Your weight is equally distributed on both feet. And then you're breathing in and out through your nose first. Yes. All the exercises today, by the way, Tara, will be all breathing in and out through the nose silently and smoothly. Again, in Tai Chi and Qigong, breath work is important, but it's not about the depth of your breath. It's about the speed of your breath. Slow down your speed, your breathing. The more you slow down, the stronger is the effect on the channels and your meridians in your body. Do a postural check here. Are you standing on your kidney one point or the balls of your feet? Is your pelvis tucked? Is your back straight? Is your belly soft and you're breathing through your belly? Just a couple of more times here. Easy. One more time on each side. Of course, if you need a break, always come out of your stance, bring the hands down. And you can shake your legs, shake your feet, but if you can, stay there. And then with the next inhale, come back to your stance. If you've shaken it, come back and bring your hands towards the side. This exercise is from the Zhang Zhuang series called Standing in the Posts. Exhale and go down. Inhale here. Exhale, come up. Inhale, go down. Exhale, lift. Inhale, sink. What's happening here? is that your hands, as if holding two posts on the side. Your gaze is forward, you're looking into the distance, and your knees are doing the job with your breath work. The 
This exercise is very good for your knees and your kidney channels along with your breath work. This also quietens the mind and helps you to focus on one point at a time. Such a simple and quiet sequence, slow it down with your breath. A quick postural check here again. Are you standing on your kidney one point? Is your pelvis tucked forward? Is your belly smooth and breathing through the belly? Back straight, gaze forward, chin is tucked. And then simply let your body do its job. Feel that coining sensation in your knees and your feet. A few more times. One last time here, come out and shake the legs if you need to. The next move is from the Badwan Jin series and it's called banging your heels seven times to dispel or to dissipate all illnesses. It's a very simple move but yet very challenging at the same time and again please do to, do to your maximum and always have an exit uh, strategy in case because our aim is not to injure ourselves. So I'll show you how the move is and then we're going to do this only for seven times. So bring your feet together, your toes and your ankles are touching. You stand up, inhale onto the toes, exhale and let go and bang your heels. The arms are just swinging there because I'm letting go I'm not using any muscular tension there so we inhale up and when we exhale we release with the breath so and the breath is through the nose again so we're going to do this seven times so why also seven times it's quite important because um, we might end up with a headache and I'll explain this during the exercise why so let's start with this inhale exhale <laughs> When we're coming up a second time, change the crossing of your hand. That's two. Tara's continuing with this exercise. That's three. So what's happening with this? Every time you're coming up and you're releasing, your energy is just going down. And when you bang your heels, the energy will come back up and release from your head. That's five. And what happens is that all your skeletal system, they get all that shock wave and it promotes your bone marrow to produce more efficiently your white blood cells and your red blood cells. And when the energy comes, it releases from the head. So if you do more than seven times, it might end up with a headache. Is that seven times? Seven. Yep. That's beautiful. Okay. Uh, next from the Shibashi, we're going to go back to the Shibashi. Go into your beautiful stance which is one foot, one foot and a half. Toes are on one line and feet are parallel. Come to your kidney one point or to the balls of your feet. Heels are empty, but touching the floor. Tuck that pelvis forward. Belly is nice and loose. Wave hands on the leg. Now, for some of you, you've done this before in my classes. And if this is something new, again, have a look first. What's happening here is that we're bringing the arms up shoulder level and then pushing it down. Imagine strings are attached to your arms. So a string, 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 all over the string in your arms and it's pulling it up and then you're pushing those strings down. You're inhaling and going up. 
exhaling, sink. Of course, it's a subtle move of the knees again. Keep your gaze forward. Slow down your breath. Don't hold your breath. What's happening here is that we're strengthening our kidney channel along with our lung channel and flushing all these meridians in order for our lungs to go and work stronger and hence increasing our immune system so if any danger comes such as things that might affect our respiratory system our body can fight it a little bit strong. So a lot of people when they do this move, they tend to do this. You want to slow it down, but also you don't want to do this. Qigong, you've got to have a flow. So just relaxed hands. Not stiff. Can we do a little exercise to release the shoulders a bit? Oh yes, we can do that. <laughs> to feel that energy flowing through the channels. Yes, yeah. so they can feel what it's like floating. Okay, so we're just going to slowly do like what we did in the warm-up. Bring our shoulders up and drop them down. Gently, especially if you've got shoulder issues. Get a little bit faster. We're not going to do this for too long. And after we finish this, we're going to go back into that position. And you'll feel the difference with your hands floating. No tension in the shoulders. Okay. Okay, we're going to go into the position. Just let your hands float up. Hmm, feel the difference. Hmm. It's quite a unique difference here, Tara. Hmm. Beautiful. Very cool. Slow down your breath. This exercise is also good for mental fatigue, insomnia, high blood pressure. Keep your gaze forward. And always do a postural check. Are you standing on your kidney at one point? Is your pelvis tucked? Is your back straight? Is your breath in your belly? Just a few more times. One last time. Push down the energy. Bring your hands down facing towards Mother Earth. If you need a break, shake your legs. If not, stay there. Next move is called Embrace the Mountain. Observe how this is done first. This time, we start with our weight on our heels. We're not on our kidney one point, so it's like the first exercise. We come up. Now we open and go forward. We are now on our kidney one points again. We roll back and we sing. Tara's continuing while I'm explaining this move. Imagine without the hands, you're standing on your heels, your knees are engaged, your weight is on your heels and you rock forward and back. Rock forward and back. Now obviously we got to add the arms into this. So, we bring the hands up, walk forward, back, sink. Breath work, very easy for this one. You inhale, you inhale further. Exhale, exhale and sink. Again, don't hold your breath here. 
Slow down your breath. Keep your gaze forward. I like to imagine that we're doing this on our, in front of our favorite mountain. That's the name of the exercise, embrace the mountain. I like embrace the universe, but I'm not going to argue with 5,000 years of Qigong. <laughs> Keep your gaze forward. Let your body do its exercise and you simply observe Keep your eyes open at all times, gazing forward into the distance, a look without looking in your face. A, a soft look at one point. A couple of times here more. One last time. Bring the hands down, the palms are down again. If you need to shake your feet, shake your feet. If not, next move is quite interesting. It's called, it's called turning a windmill into a breeze. Bring the fingers together into that diamond shape, your thumb and your index finger. Turn around, bring it all the way up and going all the way down, bend those knees, go down, inhale, come up, keep your gaze into that diamond shape that you have created with your fingers. Now be careful here, don't get dizzy on me. Some of my students, sometimes they get dizzy with this or they can't go all the way down, so I'm going to do the adjusted way. This is the adjusted way how to do this exercise. Inhaling up, exhaling down. With time, you can be able to go deeper down. Coming all the way up, exhaling all the way down. Just a couple of times here on this side again. Go all the way down. One last time. When you come all the way up, exhale all the way down, stop down into the middle and reverse the direction. Inhaling down, exhaling down. Imagine yourself, you're a windmill turning into the breeze. Keep your eyes into that diamond. Slow down your breath. Again, every time that you come up, your weight is on your kidney one points, not onto your heels. Your breath work is still in your belly. To finish this exercise, bring the hands, keep the back straight, down, bring the hands down towards the earth. If you need a shake, shake your feet or else come back, rowing a boat in the middle of the lake. Turn your hands, bring your hands up and see. Float up, push those hands down. The turning point is where you change your breath into an inhale. Keep your gaze full. Open that chest. I'm going to do it sideways so you can see.
Don't lift your shoulders here. Lifting your shoulders is not the exercise. Open your chest. Exhale and push that energy down. Keep your gaze forward into the distance. A few more times here. Slow down your breath. Quick postural check here again internally. If you're standing on your kidney one point, your pelvis is tucked. Your back is straight. Your gaze is forward and soft. And then simply let go. Let your body do its job. Two more times. One last time. Bring the hands down. Nature's fragrance drifts up the stream. It's simple, this exercise. You inhale up towards your nose, exhale, push that energy down, push the chi down. Bring in the fresh chi from the nature, inhale it in and exhale the excess back down towards your lower dantian. Imagine smelling that fragrance of nature fully into your body. Slow down your breath. Keep your gaze into the distance. This exercise yet so simple is one of the most powerful exercises in Tai Chi and Qigong. Different schools have different names for this exercise. Some of them call stroking sage's beard. Our school calls it nature's fragrance drifts up the stream. Always remember to have the tongue on the roof of the mouth as well for every Qigong exercise. Connecting your tongue to the roof of the mouth is connecting your renmai and dumai vessel, the upper side of the renmai and dumai vessel. If one day we come to a live class, I can demonstrate how strong that those two extraordinary channels when they're connected through the tongue. Just a few more times. One last time. Push your hands down. For men, left hand goes first. For women, right hand goes first towards your lower dantian. Two hands on top of each other. Your lower dantian is three fingers underneath your belly button. And then sink. Inhale, bring the back of the palms together. Exhale, push the perverse chi. This time all the exhales are being done through the mouth. Inhale through the nose, bring the palms together. Exhale, push the perverse chi. Inhale, palms together. Exhale, push the perverse chi. Inhale, palms together. Now 
for men, left hand down first, for women, right hand down first towards your lower thigh. Inhale here, hold, lift, exhale through the mouth and sink. Inhale, hold, lift, exhale through the mouth and sink. Inhale, hold, lift, exhale through the mouth and sink. Release the hands next to you, fingers down towards the floor, knees together, knees apart. Standing on our kidney one point or our balls of our feet, heels are empty. Feeling that coiling sensation through our feet, tuck the pelvis forward. Release the muscles. Pull your perineum and genitals up. And release. This time you've connected your Rema and Dumai vessel, the extraordinary vessel from the lower section. The belly is nice and soft. As if two eggs underneath your armpits, the fingers facing down. Imagine a string connecting you to the heavens or straightening your back and then releasing it gently. Your chin is tight. Teeth together, tongue to the roof of the mouth behind the teeth. Your gaze is forward. Elbows together. Elbows apart. Shoulders together. Shoulders apart. This is your natural stance. All your meridians and channels are open. You can stand here as long as you like. However, for the class purpose, I'm going to come out of my stance and close the session. To close the session, we create this energetic circle. Of course, we we gong and we give respect to all the members who've practiced, to all the teachers who have brought this to us to all the masters and the grandmasters from 5,000 years ago till today. So to create this positive energy and respect to everyone in this beautiful world of ours. Bring the hands, twist them outwards, thumb and index together, touching your thighs. Roll on the thumbs. Left hand down, right hand on top, thumbs together. And the left fist. Bring it towards your heart, bring it down towards your lower tatia. Take a half a step with your left leg backwards, bow down to all the members, teachers, masters and grandmasters who has brought this practice to us from 5,000 years till today. Thank you very much everybody. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your energy to our session with our session today. If you have any questions for the modality and the practices that we practice and teach, uh, email us to circle of om as one word, om at the end, at gmail.com. Or even you can go to our Facebook page uh, at the at sign, so circle of om, again one word. Um, or to our Instagram page, which is Circle of Om with a double M. Or the... leave the comments below. Or leave the comments below <laughs> and we'll come back and speak and see how it goes. Apart from that, I wish you a beautiful day and a beautiful practice. Anything else? Thank, Thank you very much. That was beautiful. Thank you. And see you next time in a class. Goodbye. Bye.